other than the sun, I've never seen a star. Like, ever. Imagine a world without starlight. I've been told all my life, my vision's gonna go. It's happening. Where is it? There it is. And I get really scared. A world without detail. I couldn't really see the um, castle because it was so dark. I immediately thought that something was wrong with her eyes. Knowing <laughs> that both my husband and I gave her a mutated gene. Tonight, two incredible journeys. Jesus, please fix my eyes, oh man. One revolutionary new drug. This was a eureka moment. Just knock your socks off. And a race against time to stop the world from going dark. If I had the chance to save her vision, sign me up. I can't believe it's finally happening. Six-year-old Monroe Lee dreams like many other little girls in visions of pink and princesses. Blow it out. But Monroe isn't like most little girls because her dreams just don't match her reality. I couldn't really see in the dark. Does she explain this to her friends? What does she say? Does she say... Monroe can't see in the dark. She suffers from a rare genetic disease that means she will eventually go blind. For a child who loves horse racing... He won! And Disney, everything Disney, that means never experiencing the glowing wonder of Cinderella's castle at night. I couldn't really see the um, castle because it was so dark. Hi, pretty girl. Monroe's mom says she noticed immediately that something was wrong when Monroe was just a baby. Hi. And it got worse. Monroe kept missing key milestones. So at 18 months, she's still not walking. She's still not walking. She did this like little scoop jump type crawl. And so she would scoop jump, we called it, into walls. It wasn't until she was three years old that they learned her diagnosis, a genetic mutation inherited from her parents. Only about 2,000 people in the whole country have it. It was scary. It was scary. I mean, knowing that both my husband and I gave her a mutated gene. But this is an extremely rare condition. We both blamed ourselves for a long time. While her family has given her the best childhood possible, they know time is precious. <laughs> if Monroe wanted to do it, we did it, because tomorrow wasn't promised. I didn't know if I'd wake up one day and she wouldn't be able to see at all. Monroe, look at Mama. Monroe, she can see her. Just 30 miles away, college rower Heather Hodland is going through the same thing. People always tell me they can't tell I'm blind. And I think that comes down to me being used to it my whole life and not letting it stop me from anything. For the 25-year-old, life is one big blur. As a child, she was diagnosed with the same genetic disease Monroe has. Lieber's congenital amaurosis is the name of it. It goes by LCA. I've been told all my life, my vision's gonna go. It's happening. And I get really scared. I try not to think about it. The main issue with LCA is light sensitivity. Heather can't see anything at night. A tough thing for someone who wants to be an astrophysicist and study the stars. You have no idea what they look like. I've only seen them in pictures, and that's it. Even on the brightest day, Heather sees just a fraction of what other people do, using her guide dog, Luna, to get around. I can see most of the trees, like, where they're at, kind of, as blobs of things that are tall. And I can tell them different than the buildings. Shadows and shade are a constant enemy. Where is it? There it is. I've tripped a few times and have, like, a mini heart attack when you trip going downstairs. So are faces which makes it hard for her to recognize her friends. So like when she walks in, there's been times where I didn't know it was her. So like, I might make a little comment to get her to say something or make, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I never noticed that. When she was smiling, I could tell that she was smiling because I saw like a lighter for the teeth. Um, I see where her eyes are, but I can't see her eyes. Heather uses a variety of tools, high tech. I have to invert for writing. And low tech my felt tip marker, my recipes on my iPad. 
so I can see it good. But her biggest helper is fiance Christian. I don't know if I've ever really seen his eye color. I mean, I've tried to look at him super close in the sun. Never really seen him. I've never been able to see like a blemish or anything like that on his face. She always looks for the best in things. I want to be with her, you know, knowing that she's like that. I'm scared to not be able to see like Christian's face or our future children's faces. I've wanted to be a mother all my life. So I want to be able to at least see their faces. She was giving up hope when suddenly she got a call. How did you get to the word? I was asleep one morning and my dad called me. He's like, you awake? He's like, there's this thing on the TV. It's the cure for the blind. Check it out. I think it's your disease. It all started in this medical lab in Philadelphia with a groundbreaking new drug. For almost as long as they've been married, doctors Gene Bennett, a gene therapy researcher, and Albert McGuire, an eye surgeon, have been searching for a cure to genetic blindness. At that point in time, the technology did not exist. So if you were older and more experienced in this, you would have realized this was almost impossible. To yeah, get. it was a good thing not knowing because it would just been daunting. You just like, this is ridiculous. Eventually, technology caught up. Dr. Bennett figured out a way to replace the gene that causes people like Heather and Monroe to go blind, RPE65. And Dr. McGuire figured out how to inject the replacement into the patient's eye. The treatment now called Luxturna, the first ever gene therapy approved by the FDA. Then the next question was, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if we could make blind children see? Heather and Monroe quickly signed up and landed at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. In the middle. Dr. Aaron Nagel will handle both surgeries. It certainly uh, is changing the course of the disease in a way that we've never seen before or never thought possible. While both operations will be the same, results will be unique. Age is a big factor. Monroe, who's five, may end up having more of an improvement and perhaps more stable improvements over the long term compared to Heather, who, just because of her age, may have lost more tissue. Making the decision to risk what eyesight they have left is a big deal. Enter Christian Gardino. Millions fell in love with him on season 12 of America's Got Talent, where he earned the coveted golden buzzer. When he was 12, Christian was chosen for Dr. Bennett and Dr. McGuire's clinical trial. Was this a tough call? No. What's the very first thing that you saw? I think it was my parents. Seeing my, my, my parents' face in detail, that was pretty incredible. Before surgery, doctors recorded Christian trying to navigate a maze. You can see he has trouble staying in line, missing steps, and running into barriers. After treatment, Christian saw things he'd never seen before, maneuvering around the obstacles flawlessly. Massive, massive improvement, yeah. I'd take anything of what I have now over what I had before. After months of waiting, it's Heather's chance to gain something she's always wanted. My hopes that I'm afraid to admit because I want I want them that bad, <laughs> which scares me, would be come on, little hop up. To see a star and to be able to see Christian's face, actually see his eye color. I have an appointment at the vision center. It will take two operations, a week apart one for each eye. Her left eye is up first. Heather's dad and stepmom arrive. I'm gonna put a little mark above your left eye. Let's do a heart. A heart, oh, okay. <laughs> it looks super cute. Oh boy. My vision doesn't define who I am, but it's kind of made me who I am. I don't know how to not be the blind girl. The operation itself will last about an hour. The Luxturna goes underneath the retina. We use a very fine needle to deliver a small amount of this medicine underneath the retina. The retina is only a quarter of a millimeter thick. There's no room for error. Even a small tremor can make a big difference. Dr. Nagel threads that delicate needle, and Heather's father and fiance wait. Love you, baby. Can I have a kiss? Bye-bye. I'll see you when you wake up, okay? For Monroe, the surgery could be a chance at a normal childhood. 
she was afraid. She didn't know what to expect, but I do know that she was scared just to see my baby being willed back, praying that I'm making the right decision, praying that the end result is gonna be what we hope it will be. Post-surgery, they both have to wear a protective eye patch for 24 hours, and then that first moment of truth. When she took that patch off of her eye, what did she say? Nothing. I mean, black. Yeah, it was black. She kept saying, I couldn't see, I can't see. Now we're gonna check your vision. I'm like scared to open it. Do you see my hand moving here? Stay with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.